ausgezeichnet mit dem Max und Moritz Preis als bester internationale Comic. Am liebsten mag ich Monster von Emil Ferris, Übersetzung Thorsten Hempelt, Panini Comics. Ein Mietshaus im Chicago der späten 60er Jahre. In der ärmlichen Kellenwohnung lebt die kleine Karen mit ihrer krebskranken Mutter, ihrem großen Bruder und einem Familiengeheimnis. Karens sehnlichster Wunsch ist es, von einem Wehrwolf gebissen zu werden, um selber ein Monster zu werden. Denn Silberkugel und Flock schlagen Monster, aber Monster schlägt immer Krebs. Karens Welt ist voller gebrochener Körper und Seelen. Der Vermieter ist krank vor Eifersucht auf seine Frau. Die beste Freundin ist ein verwahrlostes Mädchen mit unstillbarem Hunger. Die schöne Nachbarin hat als Jüdin in Deutschland Missbrauch und KZ überlebt und ist nun eines mysteriösen Todes gestorben, den Karen aufklären will. Und draußen vor der Tür, da wartet der Mob. Am liebsten mag ich Monster ist Familiengeschichte und Krimi zugleich, verschmilzt politisches, gesellschaftliches, privates und kulturelles zu einer Form von magischer Realität und umkreist die großen Themen Tod, Sexualität, Verlust, Gewalt und Kunst. Dabei vermischt Emil Ferris Comic-Sequenzen mit Textpassagen und Illustrationen, arbeitet mit kühlen Layouts und Bildmontagen und schafft einen Sog, der uns immer tiefer ins dunkle Herz dieser Geschichte zieht. Emil Ferris, am liebsten mag ich Monster, ist tatsächlich ein Monster. Ein fulminantes Debüt, das alle Kategorien sprengt. Hi. Um, thank you. That's the first thing I should say to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Um, that's from Karen. Uh, you gave me the biggest gift that any writer can ever get. And that was before you even gave me this award, which is wonderful, the Max and Moritz Award. You gave me your imagination. And it was delicious. Um, and I loved it. And it's, it's fantastic. When I was... Uh, like about two weeks after the book was published, and maybe more, maybe two months. And I started to feel, sense, that people were reading the book. And Karen's world was accruing more substance. That's a mystery, isn't it? That it was a place outside of me, and that I gave you that world that you could live in. And people were writing me and saying, I lived in that world at a difficult time. I think that's what this wonderful relief of being able to jump out of our lives and into another life, it's a tremendous relief. And I'm so pleased and honored that you chose to do that, chose to make that jump into a world I created. Uh, so thank you. And thank you so much to Panini for doing the amazing job of publishing my book in German. I really appreciate that commitment that you made to me. And of course to Fanographics, who when 48 publishers said no thanks, Fanographics said yes please. I'm going to give you the true answer. I think I failed. I failed at really everything I ever tried. I failed at so many things. Uh, I failed at being a fine artist. Uh, I failed at um, so many relationships. I failed at uh, so many careers. Um, I just failed. And then As a failure, uh, I decided to try comics. I'd always been making visual art that had word, uh, words attached. And as many, I'd been as a child making notebooks, very much like Karen's. Um, so I kind of had always been making comics, but I never called it that because it was so dismissed in the fine art world. And, um, 
Comics opened its arms wide to me and said, Come on, you failure. We'll let you in, you oddball. Nobody likes you, but we like you. That's really what's happened to me. It kind of makes me emotional. Early on, I read the Edgar Rice Burroughs um, Tarzan. I loved it. Um, I loved um, Prince Valiant. I loved Spider-Man. I loved a lot of comics. Um, because of my father, I was exposed to a lot of comics. Um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, well, I mean, I loved Linda Berry early on. I would read her comic all the time. Um, I loved um, Chris Ware. But all those comics, like uh, Chris Ware, Charles Burns, Art Spiegelman, uh, um, Alison Bechdel, Craig Thompson, all their work, and Persepolis, uh, Marjane Satrapi, all of this work I read when I was older. Uh, the the stuff that I loved when I was young was Mad Magazine and EC Comics. I loved anything to do with horror, all the horror comics. They're all dead. Can I still have... It's creepy. Can I still have dinner with the dead ones? Um, I kind of want to. I don't want them to be dead out of the grave. Like, I'd like a modicum of... Well, I mean, if they smelled bad. That would put me off dinner. Do you know what I mean? It's just corpses. I, I ghost, so I wouldn't mind having dinner with dead people. But you knew that, didn't you? And I think that um, that that way of connecting, that way of changing things, that way of um, that hope that it gives, this through stories. Because stories are all we have. Stories are what we're made out of. Stories are how we teach. Stories are how we learn. Stories are how we understand. Stories are how we define ourselves. It's the story we tell about ourselves. This is the future. Um, and this is what makes us human. And it, it makes us beautiful. And it can make us good. It can make us love each other. It can make us capable of empathy. It can make us larger. And it can help us understand the big secret about humans, about ourselves. We are so much more powerful than we understand. That's the big thing.